An outstanding feature of the Earth's atmosphere is the natural greenhouse effect. How does this greenhouse effect work? The sun's rays can more or less freely pass through the Earth's atmosphere. This then leads to a certain warming of the Earth's surface and the lower atmospheric layers. The Earth then emits infrared radiation, that is radiation in the non-visible range, out into space. But part of this infrared radiation is absorbed by gases, which we call greenhouse gases and is sent back towards the Earth's surface. This leads to additional warming of more than 30 degrees, which is why it's so pleasantly warm on the Earth's surface. The gases that are involved in this natural greenhouse effect are mainly water vapor, contributing about two-thirds, then carbon dioxide, contributing about one-quarter, and some other gases, such as methane. Let's take a closer look at these processes. Here we have a diagram that shows the so-called energy fluxes in some more detail. This is what we call the radiation balance. The units are watts per meter squared. Now the Earth is not fully illuminated by the Sun, rather only a circular area is. Hence only one quarter of the solar constant reaches us, which amounts to 342 watts per meter squared. And here we can now see what happens to solar radiation on its way towards the Earth's surface. A part is absorbed and converted into heat. A gas like ozone, for example, would do this. It absorbs ultraviolet radiation, which protects us from skin cancer, because this radiation can no longer reach the ground. Another part is immediately reflected back into space by the atmospheric components, which means that it does not even reach the Earth's surface. Also, 30 watts per square meter are reflected from the Earth's surface into space. About 168 watt per meter squared ultimately reach the Earth's surface and are absorbed. This is the shortwave part of the radiation balance describing what happens to the sunlight. The longwave part of the radiation balance is on the right side of the illustration. It describes the infrared radiation that is emitted by the Earth's surface a total of 390 watts per meter squared, of which 350 watts per meter squared are absorbed by the atmospheric components, the greenhouse gases. Part of this radiation is re-emitted towards the Earth's surface. And this is the greenhouse effect. That's why this life-sustaining warming of the lower atmospheric layers and the Earth's surface exists. Of course, another part is re-emitted into space by the atmospheric components. Ultimately, the radiation budget must be balanced, which means that the Earth receives as much shortwave radiation as it emits longwave radiation. Now, if this were all, we would have another problem. The Earth's surface would have a radiation surplus and the atmosphere a radiation deficit. This would mean that the Earth's surface would increasingly heat up and the atmosphere cool down. That's why we also need heat fluxes, which means air-sea heat exchange. The first heat flux is the latent heat flux. When water evaporates from the Earth's surface, the surface is cooled. The energy then is released by the process of condensation and this ensures a very effective air-sea heat exchange. The other heat flux is the sensible heat flux. Here heat escapes from the Earth's relatively warm surface into the atmosphere. And with these two additional heat fluxes, both the Earth's surface and the atmosphere itself are in balance, leading to a very stable climate within certain limits.